Hey, welcome back. This is our second episode of the Conversation. I'm Ben. I'm Josh. And uh, we're going to talk about something completely different today. Not really. Not really. That different. <laughs> it's all VR. It's a nice segue <laughs> from last from last you know last episode where we talked about what is VR, the differences between VR, AR, XR, MR, um, and going into. VR arcades. VR arcades. That's where, where like we are. Right, that's where we are right now. Woo! Hey, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, what is a VR arcade? Um, in, well, your, in your mind, I guess. I well, <laughs> from what we can see in the arcade that we're sitting in. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's a place for people to come in, try VR, play VR for the first time, maybe even play it for multiple times. Come in, play with their friends because that is a whole other expense by itself. We can get into that in a second, but. Um, it's it's a it's a place to try games, to play with your friends, to get a good interaction with people, and to play VR. Which I think, I mean, that's what you, I think. What you mentioned there is about try games. I think that that is the essence of what an arcade is, or, mm-hmm. a, or an arcade was. I mean, the old classic coin arcades. It was about going to try a game that you don't have at home, and yeah. we are we act the same way, but for virtual reality versus or that you the can't coin play at home. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because uh, imagine um, getting coin machines at home. I really would love. Them, I would actually. love one too. That would yeah. be cool. <laughs> Mortal, Kombat would, Mortal Kombat would be pretty great. So, um, I think uh, when you think about the necessity for a VR arcade or why why we choose to exist, why why are we existing? Well, your biggest argument is why can't I do this at home? Right? Can yeah. you do it at home? Oh, well, absolutely, you can. Sure. Why wouldn't you want to do it at home? Multiple reasons. Yeah. <laughs> So you're, you have a VR headset at home. What yeah. are your biggest problems that you run into? I hit my ceiling a lot. <laughs> that sucks. That I've, sucks. I have definitely punched my ceiling really hard that I had like bloody marks on the back of my fist, uh, which Oof. sucks yeah. because it's usually in games where like I'm pointing a gun up or I get excited and I punch the ceiling or something <laughs> like that. I, <laughs> but, yeah, that's Ow. something that we don't have a problem with here. No. Uh, unless I'm, for whatever reason, punching and jumping at the same time and hitting the bar. Well, I mean, we've had, we did have a person one time, I think they were about six, 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 seven, and yeah, they hit the one of the crossbars when <laughs> they went for, uh, I think they might've been playing basketball or tennis and they went for a serve and it Yikes. happens. I mean, yeah. if you're Every super tall then. like that, you're running into other, yeah, but he's running into a whole bunch of problems yeah, in his everyday life, not just VR. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and the other thing is cost. Yeah. Cost. Uh, one of our headsets is just a regular Vive Pro or a Vive. Um, they can cost upwards two thousand dollars just without anything else. Yeah. Now, I mean, we're gonna we're definitely gonna get into this in to later episodes about um, the Oculus Quest Two and the Quest One and yeah. how and how headsets. they have changed the home use of VR and where do they fit into the discussions about VR arcades in general. So, yeah. with VR arcades, I think again to touch upon a little bit what you said earlier, right? Was we have the option or the ability to showcase a wide variety of games that a person is not obligated to play or obligated to buy. They make their payment to come and play here for an hour, and then they have the option to try all these different kinds of games and what they want to try and sample, sample, right? One of the things that we give such a great uh, uh, thing for is we have so many games. We we just, we try to get as many as possible. (laughs) How many do you think we have? Two two hundred plus, give it to yeah, two hundred plus. Jeez. I think at least yeah. Imagine buying every single one of those games at home. That's expensive. That's a I, lot of money. I I mean I don't think I've owned that many video games. Period in my <laughs> life for consoles before that. Yeah, so, that's it's wild. Um, so when I th- I was just had a thought about uh, when you think about somebody, somebody who's new to VR, who's mm-hmm. never played before, but they're familiar with gaming because maybe they owned a console in the past, right? Uh, you, you you think about it from the perspective that a console player has an expectation for themselves to understand how the game works. And if yeah. you don't, there's a user manual you, it comes with generally, or there's, you know, most of those games that were made that have, you know, Nintendo, PlayStation, Microsoft, they have so much years of experience backing them yeah. that they know how to create a proper tutorial for the game or something like that. With VR, I think what we've certainly found is a lot of the developers in the VR space are independent. Oh yeah. And they're developing games that they would want to play. Oh, and they absolutely. develop them and they develop them in the way that they understand. Now the problem there that we see sometimes <laughs> is that it does not translate backwards to a brand new user, right? So why do VR arcades exist for another reason is especially for us and our existence here is bridge the gap. Right? 
We know that the time it takes to, to learn a new game can be quite extensive. We so, are a tutorial. Exactly. We are a essence. tutorial here. We or we yes, we can short the tutorial, we remove the tutorial, whatever you want to think about it as is yeah. VR arcades can definitely fill that gap for you that if you don't if you don't want to waste your time learning something in VR, that's what we're here for. We're here to really tell you the answer quickly what it is. I think that's Oh yeah. I think that's a it's an invaluable portion, I think, about VR and arcades, right? Is yep. is the human element, which we, there's, yeah. there's another thing we haven't talked about quite yet is multiplayer. Uh, we have 16 stations here, so if you can somehow scrounge up 15 of your friends, you can play 16 players. But imagine having 16 people having VR sets at home. That's it's not really a thing. Yeah. It doesn't exist. That's, it, that's extremely expensive. Yeah. Even with the cheapest headset on the market, that's hard to do. Well, okay, so so perfect example of why you know, you could be a home user of VR and you can play online with people, which is, it's been going on for decades, a couple decades now of online game. Oh yeah. But even when online gaming was available, what did you notice every year at gaming tournaments? You don't host them at home. No. No, God, you no. still go to a big stadium where you get to see people in person. There's something about being connected to each other, not just in the virtual world or in the online world, but being present in the same physical space that does change the experience. Whether oh, yeah. you're you're playing, you know, if you're playing VR at home and you're playing online with people, I mean, that's fun. You get to talk to them, you get to see them. But you don't get to have the conversation afterwards. You're right. Right? That's, you can't you can't see them face to face. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You there's don't get no, to there's no that talking. Energy. Yeah, there's it's, no, a, it's an energy that you can yeah. that is, it's palpable when you're playing in here with your friends. And then you're at, and then after your session's over, you're going, holy, did you guys see that? And, <laughs> right, like that's, you, you, I can certainly say that when I've been playing online games at home, I literally never did that when I was done playing. Oh yeah. I turned my computer off and I probably went to the bathroom or went to sleep, so. Or thought about it by yourself without anybody to talk to. Yeah, which is much scarier. It's yeah, much scarier. Can I mean, be. Yeah, yeah, thoughts going on upstairs, but um, yeah, so. So I do have a question. Yeah. How do you think that we compare to other arcades? Good question. Great yeah. question. Um, this is something we often talk about within our training mm -hmm. uh, for new locations and new staff members is, I always love to think of the analogy of a hamburger. So okay. if you go to a restaurant and you yep. have a hamburger, <laughs> it's great. Okay, you're, you're, you know that that hamburger is good there. But let's say you go to a next restaurant, you have a hamburger there and it's not very good. Are you gonna stop eating hamburgers for the rest of your life? Or are you gotcha. gonna stop eating hamburgers at that place? That place specifically. Sure. <laughs> I believe that VR is, sort of, is kind of opposite to that. That if you try VR at an arcade and you don't have a good experience, you, as, especially as, a normal, as, a, as an average person, you don't have the, the, the wherewithal to say, VR can be different at, ar at different arcades. That the experience mm -hmm. actually can be different. Because you're just thinking, well, VR is VR is VR is VR. The, all these places have the same games. They have the same hardware. It's going to be the same experience, right? No, not no. quite. No, you, it, yeah. is, it is paramountly different to the type of experience you're going to get, like we said earlier, based on the human intervention, mm -hmm. right? What are the people there doing to help you, to assist you? So, it also depends on the type of experience that's offered. Sure. Um, one of the things that we've noticed is forced movement in games causes extreme sickness, like uh, motion sickness. Yeah. And that's just not okay. Like if we want people to have a good time, we have to remove as much forced movement as possible, yeah. and, uh, and which, is, which causes us to have games that are better with normal movement, but end up having teleporting. Yeah. Anyways. And we're gonna talk about that next time, uh, more in, uh, on our next episode. Uh, please be sure to like, subscribe, follow us, uh, love us, hashtag us, all those other things that you can do. Uh, come visit, if you want to book, please go to controlvarcade.com. If you are interested in owning your own arcade or business, go to virtualrealityfranchise.com. And if you want to chat with us more, go to I love VR at controlvarcade.com. We definitely have it written down. That's here written down, yeah, I had so. to look down. <laughs> Check you later.